All right, so we have a Red Cat Cashew on the bench today. As some of you know, I, uh, I'm a big fan of the Cashew. Um, this one is actually not mine. It is my brother-in-law's. He uh, broke a few diff cups. I already did the front diff. I'm going to do the rear now. Only one broke in the rear. Um, and only one broke in the front, so I bought a set of two. I have one spare left over. That's going to go in this rear uh, looks like passenger side. And to prevent that from happening again, we got these sleeves, these diff cup protector sleeves. They go over the differential cups, and the dog bone slides inside those and prevents the cup from splitting again. And if I can show you on the front, not sure how well you can see in there, but there's the sleeves protecting the front diff cups. And if you look at the rear, you can see they are not there. So I actually haven't taken the rear diff out of this any cashew ca yet. Um, looks like I've got to loosen the wheelie beer bar, pull it away, and that's probably the only thing I've got to really get out of my way. And that appears to be a 2.5 millimeter, not a 2. I did the front, and the only tool I needed was a 2 millimeter hex bit. Loosen up the wheelie bar here. <laughs> it looks like the screw in the wheelie bar spent no surprise there. This truck has, um, <laughs> has seen some abuse, and I've posted some videos of it getting abused. Let's see if I get another bolt to replace this with, because it is bent. That's funny. You can't tell. It uh, looks pretty good there. Alright. Really bad. It does slide out of the way. But you know what? I'm going to have to get into there. I'm going to have to remove this support. There we go, looks like the 2 millimeter. For the sake of time, I'm going to use the electric driver. If you don't have an electric driver, I strongly recommend this DeWalt 8 volt gyroscopic electric screwdriver. It does a fantastic job. It works like a regular screwdriver and uses the motion of your hand to detect how fast or how slow it should be going in what direction. So it's looking like I'm going to have to take the tires off to get the wheelie bar off. Or at least make it easier. Okay. And then I can access this screw that holds the wheelie bar on. should be able to one side there's the other now let's see how much trouble this is going to give me coming off Flips up out of the way. And how about these lights? There we go. Um, let's see. 
You know what? We'll loosen up the, uh, the adjuster on the top of that wheelie bar. That's 2.5. Okay. And that should now. Because I took the top screws out. Nothing holding them on the back, is there? Aha, there is. Well, that explains that. We have a couple of screws behind. If I can get a better angle. There we go. So we have two screws here behind the wheelie bar that we have to take out. I was not expecting to be to have additional screws in here. Okay, now this looks like it will just pull out of the way, it does, the whole assembly moves up and out of the way, excellent, that screw is still in the whole thing, nope, it's not falling out so we're going to leave it. So in order to get the differential out, um, it's pretty easy on these trucks actually, I'm not going to lie. It's uh, surprisingly easy. Um, yeah, You've got one, two screws here, and then one, two underneath. Dirty. And these are long screws, all four of them, so that's why the electric driver is handy to have. There we go. And on the underside, you've got these two, four, six screws that hold in the skid plate. It's the smaller of the two that keep the diff housing in. Now with those four screws out, the differential housing should just pull right out of the back of the truck there. Let's see, should just be able to wiggle, up oh, there, came right out actually, okay. Much easier than I thought. So before I go any further, the shim came right off on the left side. So let's put, put this shim back on. I don't want to forget where it was. And what I like to do to remember which side the ring gear was on and which side it was shimmed is high tech method. Take my phone, take a picture. I know where the shim was and I know which side the ring gear was on. So when I put it back together, I can reference uh, where it was set. For this step, you're going to want to get yourself a good pair of latex gloves. It gets a little messy, and uh, mainly because there's, there's grease here in the diff case. We're going to set this shim aside. Definitely don't want to lose that. I'll try to clean some of the grease here with a rag off this diff case. Okay. 
And you know what? I actually had to replace the chassis on this truck uh, about a month ago. As you can see, the um, that's where the diff cup broke, snapped right in two. And I greased this nicely, so I see a lot of... Uh, I use uh, Lucas Red and Tacky. You can use anything that um, works for you. And so to open it up, you've got four screws. I always like to go across from the last one I took out. And let's see here. There it is. this one we got a little lucky it looks like. Uh, the other one it was the other side that was broken and what means that this diff cup is actually harder to take out because you've got to take all of the differential fluid out and the pin and gear down there to get out is kind of tricky. I had to use needle nose pliers. There's almost no fluid in there. Beautiful. So this one's not so hard actually. Let me get a pair of pliers to make life easier. What I like to do is just lift this off with a pair of pliers. Should come right off. There we go. Came right off. And this is just a pin inside that holds the cup in place. I am going to put this part on the rag. The new diff cups come with new pins as well. You don't really need to replace them unless you really want to. I am going to slide the cup out. Put the gear there. That's trash. And see this, you can see there's two pins in the bag there. I didn't use the new pin on the front. There's no reason to use the new one. And slide that. Back in, here we go. Once that is in, I can put the pin back in place. There we go. So, new diff cup is on. Normally, I would just put this right back into there, screw it down. But what I want to do is this diff is almost completely empty. I'm going to Put this gear there, clean this up as much as I can, and there's almost no fluid in that front differential. I can't believe, you know, it's funny, the center differential on this truck only had, um, it was like marine grease in it from the factory. It didn't even have, um, you know, typical diff fluid. Okay, so that's cleaned up. Clean this up. And you know what? Just so we don't lose a pen. Or a gear, we're just gonna snap that right back into place. So this piece is back together. Set that aside. I mean, I could get real fancy here and take all the um, spider gears out, but there's almost no fluid. <laughs> so cleaning it doesn't really make a difference. Um, but yeah, get as much of the fluid out as I can with this rag. And then I am just going to top it off with, I think, 20K. Just to get some fluid in there. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like, like butter already. Yeah, I don't want to go too much. I did this on the front diff, and of course, I had spillage because I had too much. And when I tightened it down, I had diff fluid coming from every orifice, every screw hole. Not a problem, just gets messy. Okay, now that case looks nice and full. You've got two pins here, 
that you want to line up and there's small holes next to screw holes on where those pins are. Oh, geez. I dropped out the uh, spider gear there. I mean not the spider gear, the, the internal gear. Okay. That's what happens when you clean all the gear oil off it. So I'm going to do this and make sure I can line those. There we go, it lined up nicely. Snap right into place and of course I get the fluid coming out of every hole. I knew that was going to happen. Not a big deal. Wipe it with a rag. And now, I'm not going to tighten them down all the way with the electric driver because I don't want to strip anything out. We're putting a metal screw into a plastic case, but I do want to get them started with the electric driver to make my life easier. Because they are long and fine threaded screws. Good enough. Go to the one straight across. Put that screw in. Come on. It's always harder to line stuff up when you get a camera rolling. Okay. screw on the diff case. And we're going to snug them down with a driver. I don't want to strip anything. The electric screwdriver is great for disassemble and partial assemble. I always tighten things, torque things down with a hand driver just because you don't want to strip things out if you don't have to. Worst case scenario, I do have a spare dip case for a cashew. Um, because there was a point when we broke dip cups before and I did not I could not get replacement cups. And what I had to do is replace the whole dip because I could get a replacement diff. So, let's see here. Oh yeah, that's much better. I mean, you can feel the difference with the having the gear oil on there. Okay, so that diff is good. I'm going to show you now. I'm going to take the truck off the bench and show you what I do to get the um, aluminum diff cup savers on so we don't have to keep doing this every couple of months. So, the reason I didn't originally put these uh, diff, protect, diff cup protectors on um, was because when I first got it, they don't fit. <laughs> and I used a bench vise, I used a hammer, several different methods. You can see, it's, I don't know if you can tell, it's scored inside of trying to hammer this thing on and it wouldn't fit. So I gave up and I came up with the idea this time around that we're going to do something different. Can heat it up. There we go. This is the uh, heat gun from my solder iron. And we're going to get this nice and hot. And when it's nice and hot, we're going to hammer the cup into that. We want the diff cup itself to be cold and the aluminum to be hot. Uh, so the woman expands and is a little more pliable, and then the diff cup is cold and hard, and it should slide in nicely like it did for the front on me. Okay, I feel that's sufficiently hot enough. It's been uh, a couple minutes under this heat gun. Let's uh, give it a try here. We're going to line that up. It's already slipping on better than it would cold, and we're going to tap it in.
loosely in there. There we go. I'm going to press it in the rest of the way with the bench vise. As you can see, it's just in a bench vise. Nice, easy turns. You can tell it's cooling off because it's getting tighter. <laughs> And I would say that's probably good. And now I'm going to do the other side. If you're wondering why these are so tight, I mean, if you look in there, look at, it took a layer of aluminum with it as it got hammered in. Um, it's just because it's the whole point of it is to prevent the diff cup from separating. Uh, I'm going to have to file those edges real quick. Otherwise, the dog bone doesn't fit in. So where the dog bone slides in, I'm going to file it down a little bit. Otherwise, you have to end up... Some people said they uh, grinded the dog bone itself. I just cleaned up the burr and the lip um, on the diff cup protector, and I did not have to file the dog bone down on the front. So hopefully the same goes for the rear. All right, this should be pretty good. And if you can tell here, I cleaned up the, uh, the burrs and the edges uh, just with a rat tail file. And um, we're going to see if we can install... Remember the ring gear was on the right, shim was on the left. Let's see if we can. We might. Oh, that went way easier than anticipated. Okay. And try to line that one up. All right, beautiful. So yeah, I did not have to grind down the dog bones on any of these that I have done. Trying to get this all lined up. There we go. Right into place. Beautiful. No play in the diff. Yeah. Come on. Perfect. All right. Diff is in, dog bones are in, nice and, okay, so now we're going to add a dab of uh, Lucas Red and Tacky, big fan of this grease, don't need a ton. When that gear spins, it's going to coat the inside of that diff case with that red and tacky. Now, if I can remember what I did with all my parts. Oh, diff cover's right there inside the chassis. Okay, we're going to pop that back in. Trying to line it up. Yeah, there it is. Snapped right in. Again, it's easier to take your time and make sure everything's lined up and snug the way it's supposed to than to have to uh, do something twice. All right. Get these screws in. You know what? I'm going to use the electric driver to get them in. 90% of the way. Okay. So we'll do the other side. And then we have the bottom. Oh, you know, let me snug them in first and then we'll put the bottom back in. That's good. Again, you're screwing metal into plastic. You don't have to go too tight. You don't want to strip it. Good.
that. I don't know how much you can see at this angle. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and snug those in. And the diff case is back together. Differential cups are on, and cup gear, cup protectors are on. So we get the cup, the broken cup replaced, cup protectors on. Last thing to do is put the wheelie bar and the put the wheelie bar and the real light housing back on. Okay. Pretty good shape here. Get a better angle for that. I can remember how I did this. Oh, there we go. That's not bad. Okay, we get the the top of the lights first. Oh, that's a 2.5. Pretty much everything on this truck is a two, except for a handful of 2.5. If anyone's wondering, I am using MIP bits. I only use MIP because I don't strip screws with MIP bits. It's not just a, it's not just a fad or anything. They are the best dr bit drivers I've ever used, hands down. Matter of fact, when I've stripped screws out with other bit drivers, I've been able to extract them with a MIP bit without even having to easy out them. Not always get that lucky, but I have. Here. Of course, the rest of the screws for this are a 2, not a 2.5. Very random. Okay, do that. Snug those down. Good. Good. And then. Oh, yeah. Very nice. These also look like two five. They are. And the other side. If I remember correctly, I did. I loosened the wheelie bar. Wheelie bars tightened, and that is pretty much it. Just going to snug these down, but much easier project than I think um, it feels like at first uh, to get the to replace the diff cups and to um, get the protectors on. Easy enough job for anyone to do. Uh, if you like what you see, like and subscribe, and uh, there'll be more of this stuff to come.